Welcome to On Your Own Terms. I'm Patty Talbot, and this is the place where we learn together what it takes to change the world on our own terms and in our own special ways. Today, I am so excited to have with me the PR maven, Nancy Marshall. I met Nancy at Heroic Public Speaking, and she sat usually kind of behind me over my shoulder, just exuding this beautiful, radiant, humor-filled, lovely energy that I just immediately wanted to get to know her better. You're going to enjoy her story and her homegrown solutions for a patchwork world and how she's using public relations to make the world a better place for entrepreneurs, for people that are committed to making change, because it is actually only when we let our lights shine And when we shine a light on the things that matter to us and let other people know what we stand for, that we actually are able to make the change and to stand for the things that mean something to us in our lives. Today, welcome Nancy Marshall. I'm glad you're here. You will be surprised and delighted by her energy, her warmth, her compassion, the way that she's allowing her own light to shine and helping others of us to do the same. Welcome, Nancy Marshall. I feel like I was very blessed because I had parents who were so devoted to providing me with a great childhood, basically. I feel lucky because I guess I assumed that everybody in the world had a great childhood. But then as I've grown older, I've realized that that isn't necessarily the case. But I think part of it, my mom, who she passed, unfortunately, in June of 2022, she was the youngest of three, but her brother was like 14 years older than her. So she was an afterthought for her parents and they didn't really supervise her very carefully. So she got in some trouble And I think, yeah, she was a little bit of a naughty girl. (laughs) So I think when I came along and I had two older brothers, I was the third child and she wanted to make sure that I did not get in trouble. So she wanted to make sure I stayed busy with good things. And, And she enabled me to be involved in so many things. I was in the 4-H club and I was in brownies and I did all the sports at school. And my mom constantly was running around, driving, picking me up, dropping me off. I was the president of my church group and I was in the choir and because I was a very social child. As a matter of fact, we have a summer cottage on a lake that actually Thankfully, I've inherited from my parents, but when I was even 10 years old, my mom and I would be at the lake together and my brothers would be off somewhere else. My father was working and I was a very good swimmer because she was a swim instructor. And sometimes she would actually tell me to go swim up and down and stop and visit with people at their docks. She wasn't worried about me drowning because I was a good swimmer. So I would literally like swim dock to dock and chat with people. (laughs) and see how they're doing and what were they up to and sometimes they would invite me in and we would play cards or we would do craft projects (laughs) I think I I was so social it was like too much for my mother even to entertain me and then actually when I did a lot of babysitting and I saved my money and when I was 15 I bought a horse because I had enough money in my bank account and I had a friend who lost interest in her horse So I bought the horse and the bridle and the saddle and all the brushes and all the things. And actually, my father built me a little barn in our backyard. And I joined something called the Pony Club, which is a club where you not only work on your horseback riding, but you also learn everything about taking care of the horse and the health of the horse and feeding and care. And you learn about taking care of the leather on the saddle and the bridle and It's quite a holistic way of taking care of horses. So I had that horse right through when I went to college. And then actually when I did go to college, my mom learned to ride and she took care of the horse while I was at college. Then we ended up selling him later on when it was just too much. I taught riding lessons and I did competitive trail riding and I 
did dressage and jumping. And, and I also, there. we've always been involved with skiing. I grew up alpine skiing. And then when I ended up having children, my two sons were top ranked collegiate division one ski racers. So that's a sport that I'm so, again, grateful that I had an opportunity to learn as a child. And my father was very frugal with his money. Skiing was a commitment, but he had good values. And if it was something that the family was going to enjoy all together, he was willing to spend the money. And he saw skiing as something. We would get in the car, travel to the ski area. My mom would make the lunch and we'd ski and then we'd have lunch in the lodge. We rarely stayed overnight, but I do remember one time being in Vermont at Jay Peak Ski Area, and we got snowed in at the ski lodge, and we went to the Apre Ski in the lounge. This particular day, I think I was about 15, we were snowed in, and there was all these people from Quebec, because we were at a ski area at Jay Peak, which is up near the Quebec border, and they were all speaking French, and I was fascinated by speaking in another language because again I like to talk so much it doesn't matter what language it was like oh yeah that's a different language and then my father and I were dance because there was live music and I thought oh I love this lifestyle and I ended up actually moving to Sugarloaf which is a ski resort in Maine near the Canadian border I was so impacted by especially that experience I just loved the lifestyle the ski lifestyle And that has been a big part of my life. So I think that, again, my parents, they were strict about my academics and I did work hard in school. I was pretty competitive academically. I really wanted to achieve a lot in the classroom. But then I had a very outdoorsy upbringing also with the horseback riding and going to summer camp and bike riding. And I've kept up that lifestyle as an adult and my boys were raised that way also. I own a public relations agency that I started in 1991. Actually, I was working as the director of communications at the Sugarloaf Ski Resort in Maine. And it was around this time of year, it was the spring and mud dries up at ski resorts at the end of ski season. So The management, which was all men, they knew that I was ambitious. I was studying for my MBA and I was career oriented. I wasn't what you'd call a ski bum working at the ski resort. I wanted to have a career. And at this time of year, they were forecasting that money was going to be tight. So the president of the resort came to me and said, if you could get yourself organized with your own business within two weeks. We'll do a contract with you. And then I scrambled and I organized my business and I had a business and had the ski resort as a client. And then because I had a pretty good Rolodex, a pretty good network of contacts, I was able to pick up several other clients pretty quickly. I had a rafting company and a sporting camp where you do fly fishing. And then I had a wind jammer, which is a sailboat that sailed off the coast of Maine. So quickly, I picked up several clients in the outdoor recreation space. And today, now that I've had my agency over 30 years, a lot of our clients are in that industry as well. And one cause that I'm very committed to is the American Lung Association. And they have an event called the Trek Across Maine, which is a 180 mile bike ride over three days. So you ride 60 miles a day with a group of people. There's usually about a thousand people that do this. And it raises money for the American Lung Association for the cause of clean air and healthy lungs. I've done this for seven or eight years now. But ironically, when my mom passed in June of 2022, she had lung disease, which we really didn't even realize, but it came on slowly. But then towards the end, she was having a really hard time breathing. And boy, watching her demise, especially the last eight days of her life when she was intubated. Being able to breathe is so important. And so the cause of preventing lung cancer and lung disease and making sure that we all have clean air to breathe. Plus 
this whole concept of riding your bike 60 miles a day for three days with a group of about a thousand wonderful people. It's just a great event. It gives me great joy to be involved with the event and, and pride actually that I'm a connector at heart. I've been able to bring several of my clients on board to support the Trek Across Maine as sponsors. And that is something that I've been doing more and more of recently is helping raise sponsorship for events. And I've always connected with people very naturally. It's not work to me. It's something that I was born to do. I believe that it's in my DNA. It, it makes me happy that I can help connect people in mutually beneficial relationships. The fact that I can introduce people to each other and then it can help, again, ra either raise money or oftentimes I help other people find jobs or give people testimonials that help them advance their career. It just makes me feel really satisfied and joyful when I can do that. <music>
<laughs> and he gave me the moose meat and then I cooked moose meat in Caldine sauce and I posted that on social and he was like oh my gosh nobody has ever done that with my sauces but anyway we connected again through the whole entrepreneurial spirit and I think women who are entrepreneurial have this sense of limitless possibilities and that's what I love and I feel like as I'm getting older, I'm almost seeing more limitless possibilities. Like nobody's going to hold me back. Why not? Why not do it? And so again, especially as we get older, you get a sense of there, there is a limit to the length of your life, <laughs> whether you like it or not. We can try to live healthy and extend our life as much as possible, but we are mortals. <laughs> Even though sometimes we feel like we're immortal, but no, we are mortals. So I have a sense of urgency in my life now, and I do love connecting with other diverse entrepreneurial women. We have a television program here on Maine Public Broadcasting called Greenlight Maine, which is like Shark Tank, but it's it's for Maine businesses, and I'm I'm involved with that. I help them raise sponsorships, and they had a special series about diverse or businesses owned by diverse owners basic that has been a wonderful thing for me to be involved with and again to help raise sponsorship money and it just energizes me it, to make these connections and again i think if we all can bring curiosity to our relationships and when you enter a new relationship instead of wondering what's in it for me Instead say, oh, what do we have in common? And if we don't have things in common, what is different about our backgrounds and, and how can we help each other? That makes me really happy. I hope to be able to inspire other women, especially to feel like Life is just full of opportunity and not feel limited if you don't know somebody that we all have more power than we may think we do. And you really just need to reach out and connect with other people. And if you need something, just ask. And I think so many people feel limited because, oh, I could never do that. Or they're afraid or they haven't had role models who thought big. Again, I feel so blessed that I was able to start a business at a relatively young age and carve out a life for myself that just every day brings me joy. Sometimes when I talk about possibly retiring, my son, Craig, who's 30, he says, mom, why would you want to retire? You just love what you do. And I'm like, you're right. I don't want to retire. <laughs> Through my podcast, I have the PR Maven podcast, which comes out every Tuesday. And then through my speaking career, which I'm going to be hopefully accelerating is my public speaking. I hope to be an inspiration and to show people that Building your personal brand, which is the story around who you are that attracts other people to you and allows you to build a large network of people, people who will support you, that this is the key to professional success and personal happiness. Just because you were raised in a little town or just because maybe your parents might not have been that successful. It doesn't mean that you can't step out as a human, as a person, and build your own personal brand and set your own goals. And a lot of it comes from connecting with other people and reading books and exposing yourself to the news. In public relations, I work with a lot of journalists and I pitch stories to journalists. So I'm in touch with people in the news media all the time. I think it's really important to stay on top of what's happening in the world because, again, 
We're all part of it. And we all have our own individual stories that are part of the big global story as well. Having confidence, I guess, is really important. Confidence that you matter. At a certain point in my life, I suppressed who I was because there were people in my life who criticized me for being so extroverted and said, you really should stop talking so much. And you really, you're just too much. And so I went through this phase where I really struggled and I tried to put my head down and just stay in my lane. And then there's a point maybe about 10, eight to 10 years ago when I was like, wow, I'm not doing that anymore. I have this gift. I hope it's not the gift of just going around talking about myself. It's this gift of using my curiosity and being able to connect with people and then also helping other people connect. So there's nothing that makes me happier when I can introduce two people that I know and then they have a relationship that leads to something great as well. That's what I'm all, all right, about. I'm ready. I was in an exercise class this morning actually with this woman and she's probably in her 40s, maybe late 40s. And tonight she's trying out for a part in the play Cinderella. And she said, I haven't really tried out for a play for 35 years since I was in school. But she said, I just decided I have to put myself out there and just try. And when she said that, it really resonated with me because I went through this heroic public speaking training, which is where I met you, Patty. And it was an important moment in my life when I decided, yeah, I am going to put myself out there. And I think I do have an inspirational message. And I do feel like I have a lot of enthusiasm and I still have a lot of energy. And why not me? And why not now? So again, put yourself out there and Figure out what is your superpower that you can share with others and be an inspiration to others to help them achieve their goals and dreams. And that's really what I try to do. And I've been working on it with my podcast since 2018 when I started the PR Maven podcast. And I also write for Forbes.com about entrepreneurialism and public relations. I guess my message is don't be afraid to put yourself out there. And a good personal brand attracts the right people into your life. And it also repels the people that don't belong in your life. We are not one size fits all. We're all unique. We don't need to be liked or known by everyone. That isn't really the goal. I think the goal is to attract the right people into your life who fill up your cup and make you feel energetic and enthusiastic and make you just want to live your best life. I'm known as the PR maven, that's M-A-V-E-N, and that word means expert, and a PR expert is someone who really knows how to help people make connections and connect stories with the media and I started the PR Maven Nation, which is a community on Facebook. And so I'd love to have people join the PR Maven Nation group on Facebook. And that's where I share news about my podcast. And also I share my Forbes columns and what I call my thought leadership. So um, I do have a lot of ideas and thoughts and I try to stay relevant and connected with what's happening in the news and then connect things back to public relations and the PR Maven Nation. I also am on LinkedIn as Nancy Marshall and I do share regularly on LinkedIn and I would love to have more connections there. So I just feel like social media was invented just for me. <laughs> Because it allows me to connect with people all the time and interact and stay on top of what people are doing all around the world. And I do have friends and relatives and contacts around the world. And it makes this world seem smaller when you're connected.
So right now we're working with the Maine Maritime Museum promoting an exhibit they have called Sea Change, which is about the warming of the ocean, particularly the ocean off the coast of Maine. They call it Casco Bay, which is unfortunately warming faster than most of the ocean waters around the world. And I feel that PR can play a tremendous role in educating the public about global warming and the dangers involved. I said I'm a skier and I cherish my days on snow, but I'm afraid that when my grandchildren become skiers, and I don't even have grandchildren yet, but what I do, I would love for them to be able to learn to ski. But at the rate that the planet is warming, it's going to threaten our winters. So there is an organization called Protect Our Winters that is trying to, to curb the warming of our planet. So I feel like public relations is uniquely positioned in a way to not only communicate key messages through social media, but also through the news media and tell stories. That's really the role of a PR person is to be a storyteller and telling the story of the dangers of global warming is it's really important right now. So it resonates with more people. Lisa Wenzel, who has a 22 year old son who was born with a rare chromosomal disorder, which made him what many people would call disabled. But he's been able to do so many things because Lisa and her husband, Scott, have devoted their lives to allow him to do special skiing, special surfing, special water skiing, special horseback riding, the Special Olympics. Lisa, years ago, we talked about maybe writing a storybook for children about her son, whose name is Scotty, and about, and he has this stuffed dog. The dog's name is Spillway which is named after a ski lift that he's been on. But, and this book that she finally wrote this year, The Adventures of Spillway and Scotty, it's written from the dog's perspective about how wonderful it is. The dog is a stuffed dog. It's a very big stuffed dog. And Spillway goes on the boat when Scotty's water skiing and he rides the horse with him and he does all the things. But years ago, we started talking to Lisa about writing a book. And she said, I can't do that, especially if I'm going to have to be interviewed about it by the TV stations or the radio, or I could never stand up in front of a group. But during the pandemic, something happened. I think she had enough time alone to really think about the impact that she could have. And Lisa, who is a beautiful, wonderful woman, she paired up with another friend of ours named Heidi Bullen, who has written two other children's stories, and Claudia Diller, who is an illustrator who's so gifted and talented. And of course, Heidi and Claudia and I have all watched Scotty grow up and witnessed how Lisa and her husband Scott have been so devoted to him and have given their lives to making sure that he had every opportunity possible he can make sounds, but he can't speak. But he has an iPad and he can he can touch pictures to, and the iPad will communicate on his behalf. But now there's this amazing movement happening where these books are flying off the shelves and the store called L.L. Bean, which is one of our most famous retailers here in Maine, has picked it up. And our power company, which is one of my clients, bought 800 copies to put in every library in the state. It's snowballing into this movement. They're having gatherings where Scotty is up front, entire schools, 1,500 children. And the message is that just because Scotty is different, he's still a human with a heart and a soul. And he wants to be friends too. And it's so beautiful and it just makes me so happy to see because Lisa decided that yes, she could make a difference for other families that have special children, but also for able-bodied children to realize that just because he's different, 
doesn't mean that you wouldn't want to be his friend. Yeah, this book, it's on Amazon. It's called A Dog and His Boy, The Adventures of Spillway and Scotty by Heidi Bullen and Lisa Wenzel. And I encourage you to check it out. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. It's such a delight to get to know you through this process. I was excited by the little bit of your speech that I was able to hear during rehearsal groups and heroic public speaking, because I saw in you a light that sometimes people were trying to dampen a little bit. We've been talking for weeks on this show about what I call my NESS method, NESS, N-E-S-S, -S, standing for your nature, your energy, your story, and your system. You have such a beautiful nature about you, such an energetic way of being in the world, and your energy creates a light that illuminates you, but also illuminates those people around you. You use your story and your system and your wisdom to make us all rise into the potential we have as change makers. Thank you for being with me today. I look forward to following you along the change makers journey. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I know you've been inspired by Nancy Marshall as I have from the moment that I met her. Next week, we're going to feature another amazing change making woman who's using her nature, her energy, her story, and her system to make the world a better place. In the meantime, may you be grounded in your beingness, guided in your doingness, generous in your connectedness, and inspired in your reflectiveness so you can change the world on your own terms. I'm Patty Talbot. I'm always learning. And I know you are too.